You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast exploring scripture with Dr. T. Michael W. Halcom and Dr. Frederick J. Long. Welcome and enjoy. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Ah, December 26th. It's the day many have been waiting for. It's the day many have been yearning to get to. December 26th. <laughs> what a day. December 26th brings with it a sense of magic, a sense of relief. December 26th brings with it a sense of salvation. No more stressing out over what to get home. No more worries about how much I have to spend or don't have to spend. No more clogging up my schedule or calendar with special events. No more eggnog. No more pound cake. And no more putting on pounds from cake. <laughs> December 26 means it's all over. 330-ish more days until we have to start braving the stores and searching for gifts again. 330-ish more days until we have to stress out about whether the Amazon box is going to make it on time and frantically checking tracking numbers every few minutes. Isn't that how some feel during the season of Advent and the run-up to this day, December 25th? Well, you thought I had my day wrong. <laughs> nope. I mean... Aren't there many who seem to get more excited about December 26th, the day after Christmas, more than December 25th? That's the day, so they think, that allows for some breathing room. No more anticipating, no more waiting, forget venting, no more adventing. Now it's just catching our breath. Moving on and getting back into the routine of things. Most of us, if we're honest, are more creatures of habit than we care to admit. And after all, uh, so December 26th is a day, at least culturally speaking, culturally speaking, that seems to promise us freedom from all the hubbub and a promise of a return to routine. What I want to suggest to you, even if only briefly, on this day, is that signing up for a subscription to such a view is to sign up for a life of faith or a faith life that is ultimately less than. You see, across the centuries of church history, we have proof that the church didn't subscribe to such views. No, the church had its own way of life all of which was shaped around an annual calendar, what is now called the church year, or the liturgical calendar. And rather than viewing Advent, or even December 25th, as right there at the end of the year, the church, historically, has viewed it as marking the beginning. December 25th, as many at the bridge have heard me say, was not the twelfth day of the twelve days of Christmas, but rather... Day one. Historically, in Christianity, Christmas lasts for 12 days. I don't know if you knew that or not. It's a rather modern practice, you see, which celebrates Christmas as an end of year thing, as a one day event kind of thing, as the 12th day of Christmas kind of thing. We've got it perhaps wrong. December 25th marks the first of the 12 days of Christmas. Which means two things, right? One, that New Year's Day, and right first on our calendar, New Year's Day is always the eighth day of Christmas. And if you know your scriptures, you know that the eighth day was the day of Jesus' circumcision. And so we should be, as Christians, associating New Year's Day with that. And second, uh, the last day of Christmas, day 12, is January 8th. So then a new season begins after that. And eventually we get to Lent and we head toward Good Friday and Easter. And all of it is meant 
to walk us through the life of Christ as His Spirit walks through life with us and in us. Advent then and Christmas mark a new beginning. And so rather than breathing a sigh of relief that it's all over, the reality is for us, it's just beginning. It's just beginning. Every time we remember this and every time we practice this, we are practicing a new beginning. Put differently. We are living out the verses that we've heard read this morning. In the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And we continue reading in that. The light shines in the darkness. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We all know these words. There's just something about those first few in the beginning. We hear echoes of Genesis 1-1 in there, don't we? In the beginning. Now, I don't know if you ever thought about it, but I'm certain that Mary knew that line in the beginning. I'm certain that Joseph knew that line in the beginning. We know from Luke's gospel that, that Mary had a poetic streak in her, right? Uh, she sang her Magnificat And more than likely, she sang to her baby while he was in the womb. How many times did that baby hear Mary say, In the beginning. In the beginning. When he was born, did those words, that phrase, take on completely new meaning for her? When she looked at God's little eyes as she held him, might she have told him the old, old story starting with, In the beginning. That line, that that part of the line was so formative in both ancient Judaism and Christianity. In in Hebrew, Barashit Barah. And in Greek, in Arche. They convey this certain type of esteem or honor, those words. And even in our English, they have a sort of weightiness to them. A heft in the beginning. Friends, we're not a waiting on December 26th kind of people. We're not slogging out to the end of the season kind of people. We're not found repeating the line, in the end. (laughs) Especially not during Christmas time. No, we're an in the beginning kind of people. In the beginning kind of people. We know that we bow to a God of beginnings. So for us, it's not 330-ish more days until we got to do this all again. No, for us, it's a day that marks a beginning, day one. December 25th is the day we get to begin our journey. Following the footsteps of Jesus again. And in 364 more days, we get to start yet again. We get to. So I want to implore you, going for tomorrow, December 26th, see East today, December 25th. And let it not mark the end, but a beginning, a beginning of journey for the next year. Through life with Jesus. Don't even wait till next week, New Year's Day, to take your cues from society to start anew. No, start anew today. In the beginning, a new beginning. Hear the words of our old, old story ringing in your ear, in your ears yet again. In the beginning, in the beginning, Bereshit bara, in our chay, in the beginning, in the beginning of this day today, I stepped up my game. In the beginning of this day today, I leveled up in my faith. Right. In the beginning of this day, I vowed to mature. In my faith. In the beginning of this day, I pressed on toward the high calling in Jesus Christ. You know, in Jesus' day and culture, there was a wonderfully beautiful tradition called in Hebrew, the Midut Chesed. It's purposeful or intentional acts of kindness. These were not random acts of kindness. 
There were purposeful, intentional acts of kindness birthed out of and rooted in one's identity and fidelity to God's covenants. This was showing kindness to someone, not out of mere rule following, but out of devotion to God. You know, maybe today, maybe today, someone out there is just waiting for their in the beginning moment. Maybe they just need a jump start from you and me. And maybe that starts with you and me right here in this room. And so we're going to invite you and perhaps challenge you to engage in some Christmas Day Gemil Chesed. What a better way to honor Jesus on his birthday than to do such a thing, Gemil Chesed, an intentional act of kindness. So on your way out, in just a few moments, we want to invite you to take a lunch sack. They're sitting there at the back of the door. Uh, You can take one or two or three per family. And as you head to wherever you're going next, we want you to stop, pull off the road, walk wherever you're going. We want you to find somebody who's hungry, who's in need on this Christmas day, maybe who's lonely. And we want you to give that to them. Don't keep them for yourself. Find some. Stop. Give it to them. Tell them Merry Christmas and that Jesus loves them. Give them and in the beginning. And who knows? Maybe this will be the jumpstart you need too. A jumpstart into a new year of giving. Share it. And the new chesed in your life. In the beginning moment for you too. And not on December 26th, but December 25th. Amen. 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 Looking for creative ways to launch your biblical language studies to the next level? We here at Glosa House create resources with you in mind. We've created a stock of innovative and cutting edge audio, video, digital, and print resources to help you reach your language goals. Visit glosahouse.com to find what you've been looking for. Glosahouse, language resources for the global community.